select your COVID weapon. Smartphone. Welcome to COVID Trail, slowing the spread. The mission? To see if our smartphones can help us slow the spread of coronavirus once we can finally leave the house again. Yeah, I've been stuck at home for too long playing video games. But the best way to understand the complicated world of contact tracing? With a controller. Many states, app developers, and tech companies are working on contact tracing apps or exposure notification apps. Using either Bluetooth or location services on your phone, these apps aim to help us record who we've been in contact with. If people in close proximity report that they have COVID-19, we can then self-isolate to slow the spread. One of the main goals of these apps, help the human contact tracers. These public health officials ask infected patients where they've been and who they've interacted with. Then they track them down and tell them about their exposure to the virus and recommend quarantining. But can this really work? First, let me explain the technology. Then, how different real-world situations might play out. Then, we'll talk about how this all might be a long shot. Here's your first task. Download the contact tracing app. This is all opt-in. You aren't forced to turn it on if you don't want to. Two technologies can be used to track what people you come in contact with, Bluetooth and location. Bluetooth has been getting the most attention since Google and Apple have put their support behind it, teaming up to make a privacy-focused solution that works between iPhones and Android phones. Eventually, iOS and Android will be able to provide Bluetooth exposure notifications without you needing to download an app. A coffee shop nearby has reopened. Ready to see how Bluetooth works in this situation? So here we are. Your phone constantly broadcasts via Bluetooth a unique string of numbers. Think of it like unique tokens. Your phone is also listening for those tokens. If two phones are in close proximity for about five minutes or more, they receive each other's tokens and securely store it on the phone. As you go through your day and spend time near people, you collect other tokens and others collect yours. Sadly, someone you were near tested positive for COVID-19. Once a public health authority has verified that, this person's app reflects this and uploads the tokens shared with other people near them. Then your app downloads tokens periodically to check for a match. If you have one of those tokens, the app will notify you that you are near someone who tested positive for COVID. Ready to see how location works in this situation? Some apps record a timestamped list of everywhere you've been. This wouldn't be able to help with knowing who you were next to, but where you were. The trail of your movements can give context. If someone you were near tested positive for COVID later, they would share their location trail with contact tracers to help track down other people you may have come in contact with. If used alongside Bluetooth, it could also give context to those notifications. There are a lot more privacy worries when it comes to location data. It makes sense. It can tie you to a specific place and time. In fact, Apple and Google say that app makers who want to take advantage of its Bluetooth platform cannot use location services. But would you need both Bluetooth and location in real-world situations? If you breezed by someone in an aisle or even stood near someone for a few minutes, Bluetooth wouldn't capture it. Location data wouldn't capture your indoor location, but it would show you were at the store, which could be helpful to you or a contact tracer for retracing your steps. Plus, if multiple people tested positive in that area, public health authorities could mandate cleaning the location. If you were surrounded by dozens of people on a train or plane, Bluetooth tokens would do their thing. Location likely wouldn't be accurate or even picked up if you didn't have service. Bluetooth would do the trick if someone seated near you reports testing positive. Although here location would also be helpful. It seems like a pretty big long shot for all of that to work. First, people need to be okay with the privacy trade-offs. Google and Apple's Bluetooth platform seems to be the most privacy-respecting choice, engineered to not reveal any personal information and for most of your info to stay on the phone. Each state will decide which app it releases and what technology is used. 
For instance, Utah's Healthy Together app not only uses location services to collect where you were, but also requires your name and phone number. The maker of the app says this is so health officials can get in touch with those who test positive. It says all data is deleted after 30 days. The Apple and Google Bluetooth technology should start to show up in apps in late May. The even bigger hurdle? That the vast majority of people need to participate for that Bluetooth app to work. If nobody on the train or coffee shop has the app, it won't do any good. And then there's the chance of false positives and for the tech to just not work. Plus, we need widespread testing and people to be honest and report if they're sick. So yes, your smartphone may be a weapon in this fight, and it may help those human contact tracers. But a lot has to happen for you to win the game and truly slow the spread.